So now for the circuit in this video we are actually taking mostly the circuitry from the last video. We have a knot gate here, Schmidt trigger knot gate I should say, that is wired up to uh, oscillate uh, just by itself with the timing resistor and capacitor. Last video we were powering an LED directly with it and the LED lit up when the output went high. Now we added a transistor. So again when the output's high that turns the transistor on and the LED uh, turns on. So uh, ultimately we're getting the same effect right there but in, since we're not powering it directly with the output because the output has uh, limitations instead we need less current to control a transistor so hopefully that's keeping the output uh, voltage more true and also getting more voltage across the LED transistor shouldn't really be stopping any of the voltage when it is on when it's off of course it cuts off the uh, voltage so in any case we are definitely getting uh, a lot more current through the LED in this video than the last video that is the main takeaway and zooming in you can see that the integrated circuit that we're using is uh, the 74 high-speed CMOS 14 right there and that's important the the 7400 series of integrated circuit 14 means that there's a six Schmidt trigger not gates on it. The high speed CMOS version is the reason why we can use uh, the voltage. This is the minimum voltage uh, 2 volts that I generally see with high speed CMOS uh, integrated circuits. Other ones may have a voltage but I commonly see 2 volts as the minimum. I think 6 volts as the maximum. But in uh, any case we have the uh, NOT gate. So the output is the opposite of the input. If the input is low then the output's high. Uh, capacitor charges rises high enough then you have a high input that sets the output low, the capacitor discharges. So if we had one specific voltage where it made that change, it would just uh, bounce back and forth rapidly no matter what. Um, so the uh, Schmidt trigger part of it adds hysteresis. So there's a middle ground region between uh, when the input is considered high or low. That middle ground region, it could be either one. So we're bouncing back and forth between those two points instead of uh, rapidly oscillating past a single point. Hopefully that makes sense. But in any case, we were powering the LED in the last video, um, which will uh, lower the voltage. The uh, CMOS version here of the 7414, we actually get uh, two volts out. It's probably a spec lower, but uh, really close to two volts. And then uh, practically zero volts also. Um, so that's called rail to rail, when you get the uh, supply rail voltage at the output, when it's either high or low. But uh, when you add a load um, with these high-speed CMOS versions, it seems to throw off the voltage rather quickly. So instead of powering the load directly, we just need a little bit of current. So I'm using uh, 2.2 kilo ohms, 2,200 ohms. I tested it with 3 kilo ohms and 1 kilo ohm, and uh, it looked pretty much the same with those. So they're, they're probably okay, but uh, this seemed like a, a good balance right there. So that's what I used. Uh, to limit the current from the output through the base 2 emitter. Remember it drops about 0.7 volts. Also remember that. But uh, you got about 2 volts powering it. So in any case that tiny amount of current allows a lot more current to flow from collector to emitter. Now we are only working with 2 volts total. That's about what it takes to get a red LED to light up. Um, and the red LED will build up a little bit more voltage across it. So technically we could probably get rid of this resistor. But we might get a voltage spike or something and even a brief pulse of too much current may uh, blow an LED. So that would kind of help buffer it. Hopefully that makes sense. In any case I'm using the 2N3904 NPN bipolar junction transistor for uh, the transistor and for the timing 1 million ohm resistor because we're only working with 0.47 microfarad capacitor there it's uh, charging uh, pretty quickly even with that high value resistor setting the timing. In any case, there you can see uh, the LED on there. There's the output. There's the input of that uh, knock gate right there. So we're going to zoom back. I'm going to move the uh, power supply over. Last video, when we were just powering the LED directly from the output, we were getting uh, zero milliamps of current. It was never changing right there. Now it's flashing. When I yank the resistor, I'll try to the timing resistor. I'll try to get it right. When the LED turns on, you're going to see that. Uh, looks like we got three milliamps of current at the output. 
Now a little bit of current, I bumped power supply, that's why the LED went off. Um, a little bit of current is uh, always going through that uh, when the output is high, through that uh, base resistor there. If I remove the LED, now you can see there's zero milliamps on the uh, power supply. So uh, less than one milliamp it looks like. Going through that resistor, pretty much all of the three milliamps is the LED right there. So of course, this isn't as accurate as a multimeter. Maybe we'll take some measurements with the multimeter in the next video, but that's close enough. Let's put that timing capacitor, or resistor I mean, back. So in any case, this is my short video series and this is a really long video for this series. So I'm gonna end it there. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video. And